Hi there, I'm Jacob. All month long, we've been talking about love. Love is showing others how much they matter to you. But how do you show others how much they matter to you? That, my friends, is a mystery. Huh. That sounded scary. But mysteries don't have to be scary. Some of my favorite books are mysteries. They can get really tense and stressful, but there's always that moment in the end when the detective solves the case. You will find the guilty party hiding out in the school. What school, you might ask? Elementary, my dear Watson. I searched all over the neighborhood, Mrs. Jenkins, but I couldn't find your missing parakeet. My bet is he's been in his cage all along, or my name isn't. Wikipedia Jones. The item used to chase Madame Lafarge away was none other than the spatula. <sighs> All that's fine for a book, but it's a little different when you have a mystery in real life. In today's story, we'll hear about Abraham and Sarah and how God told them to leave home. Where would they go? Well, that, my friends, would be a little mystery. Too close. Okay. Mm. All right. I'll see you guys in a few. Just. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Genesis, chapters 12 and 15. When Adam and Eve turned away from God and broke the loving rule God had given them, sin had entered the world. People no longer had a perfect relationship with God or each other. I wish you weren't my brother. Their family grew. Tribes and cities began to fill the earth, but almost no one followed God. People looked out for themselves instead of each other. During this time, though, one man did walk faithfully with God. Noah. Yes, God? People have filled the earth with their harmful acts. I'm going to put an end to it. God instructed Noah to build a huge boat. I'm going to bring a flood on this earth, but I'm going to make my covenant with you. God told Noah to bring his family and two of each animal aboard the boat so that they would be saved. Then rains came and washed over the earth for 40 days. And when the waters finally receded and new life began to grow again, Noah and his family returned to dry ground. Thank you, Lord. Then God set a rainbow in the sky and promised to never again flood the earth. Noah's family grew, and once more, people began to fill the earth. Few of them listened to God, though. They had no room for God's love in their hearts, wishing only to put themselves first. In the midst of all this, God still had a plan to show deep, deep love to people. He chose a man named Abram who lived in the land of Haran with his wife, Sarai. Abram. Who, who is it? It must have been a surprise for Abram to discover that the God of the entire universe wanted to speak with him. But Abram couldn't deny the compelling, loving voice that called him. Go from your country, your people, and your father's family. Go to the land I will show you. But I'm 75 years old. Why would I leave everything that I know? I will make you a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a blessing to others. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. God wanted to tell a story through Abram's family so that people across all time could see God's love for them. But Abram must have been filled with questions. Sarai and I don't have children yet. We're old. <laughs> uh... How can we have a large family? What will we do in the new land? How will we live there? God gave no answers, except for God's presence, full of peace and love. All right, God. We'll go. Abram and Sarai, later called Abraham and Sarah, packed up all they had, chests and boxes, platters and blankets, sheep and cattle and goats. 
Oh, Abram, I hope you know what you've heard. God called us. I can't tell you how, but I, I know. His voice, it was so full of love. <laughs> but me have a baby. Just look at my wrinkles. So Abraham and Sarah and their whole household set out on a very long journey. They covered almost a thousand miles until they reached the land of Canaan. Here, this is it. Maybe so, but I'm still not sure about the baby part. The land opened up before them, wide and rolling. Abram found a tree in Moray that branched overhead like a sheltering roof. God, we're here. We came all this way. What now? I will give this land to your family who comes after you. Thank you. I just needed to hear that again. Carefully, Abraham piled up stones to form an altar in honor of God. This will stand as a reminder of all that you've promised, Lord. Over the years, Abraham and Sarah made their home in this new land. Abraham made some wise choices and some poor ones. But still, God blessed them with some very good things. I won't say this necklace isn't beautiful, Abraham, but what good is silver and gold if we've got no one to give it to? You know, God promised us a family. Years ago. You really think I can have a child now? I know it seems impossible, but... That night, the Lord appeared to Abraham in a vision. Do not be afraid. I am like a shield to you. I am your very great reward. I know, Lord, but we still don't have any children. When I die, everything you've given us will go to a servant. The Lord led Abraham out of the tent. The night sky stretched overhead. Look up at the sky. Abraham craned his neck to look up. Stars wheeled in the night, vivid points of light. They spun out in layer after layer, reaching into the vast depths of space. Count the stars if you can. Abraham's breath caught in his throat. I can't. No one could. As many stars as filled the sky, that's how many children will be born into your family. God's voice was deep and sure, filled with the same love that had drawn Abraham and Sarah from their home years before. Yes. Yes, God. I believe you. It would still be years to come, but God in love would keep that promise to Abraham and Sarah. It was the first step in a plan to show love not just to their family, but to the entire world. Abraham's life was full of mysteries, but he didn't let that bother him. God told Abraham to leave home, and Abraham went, even though he didn't know what God had in store. God promised Abraham the whole world would be blessed because of his family, and Abraham trusted God even though he didn't know for sure if the promise would come true. For us living today, God's promise to Abraham is no mystery. We know that it came true because thousands of years after Abraham, one of his family members was born in the town of Bethlehem. Jesus. God always had a plan to show love to the world by sending Jesus. You know what that means? It means God still has a plan to show love to the world. God has a plan to make things right. That's true no matter what's going on in your life or in the world. And you can be a part of that plan by trusting God and sharing God's love with others. You can help solve the case. If you suspect a person needs something, Offer to help them. When a neighbor's in need, you can get to work. If someone is in danger, speak up and be on their side. The one thing to remember today is this. God has a plan to show love to the world. It's no mystery. You can trust God no matter what. Well, that's all I have for you this month. We'll be back next month with something brand new. You want to know what it is? Shh. Sorry. It's a mystery. See you next time.